Hello, CIA. What's going on, guys? Uh, it's an exciting day. Uh, first official day of free agency. My first podcast that I'm doing myself. And I am joined here by my first friend in this entire world, Andrew Hans. Uh, go back to pre-K. Um, very good to have you here, buddy. Uh, How you doing? I'm great. I'm not as good as you, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Andrew is a lifelong diehard Nets fan back from when they played in, in New Jersey. Um, this, is, this has been a long time coming, right? This is. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I know you've been talking about trying to get me on a pod for a long time, but I know this is your your first deal. Is like this is a big deal for you too. No, I meant I meant the Nets, man. I meant oh. I meant your tortured existence as a Nets fan. Well, yeah, if you look at my Twitter bio at h a n c two four seven, I called myself a tortured Nets fan. Um, right. That all ended basically yesterday, and it was you could have eliminated that midway through this past season too, just how they outplay expectations the how quickly the entire culture built all leading to this massive trade yesterday was the greatest day in Nets history because you know now this is going to have a lot more solid solid outcome than the last big trade that we were involved in so right yeah I want to I want to get to that trade in a second um but just first let's just talk about what it's going to look like on the court Kyrie Irving Kevin Durant DeAndre Jordan all of the pieces that they had before. I'm when curious they were to see how DeAndre is going to play out. Um, <clears throat> I've heard some so people say that he's going to play more of like the Jarrett Jack role that like he knows and his friends with a lot of people around the league, and hopefully that could be like a an attraction point because <clears throat> we have Jared Allen. He's very good. I don't right. know if DeAndre should supersede him as our starter. Interesting. How many? Because well, right, just his, I know. Both are tall. Both protect the rim very well. DeAndre's going to help him there, but I mean, it's just like the the defensive performances that Jared put on, and just the way he's able to run the floor now. I I think it's just a better fit. Just like because we like to play with pace. Kyrie is fast. That right. could help a little bit more. But also, DeAndre would be able to play a nice role in like a half court pick and roll for us, definitely. Right. It would be really fun to see. And it just gives us depth at the center position that we didn't have. We didn't have multiple seven-foot guys last year. It was either we have Jared Allen, Jared Allen on the floor or we're basically playing pretty small. Right. I would love to see the two of them on the court together. That would be funny. It'll never happen um, no. because no. the people running the show are too smart. Exactly. And, um, you know, I, I definitely <laughs> want to first take credit for that from Spurs Nation to you. You're welcome. Um Tell me about how. Sean yeah, this entire thing is like basically a a whole Spurs like a whole branch of the Spurs tree. Atkinson oh, yeah. in Atlanta, who was coached by, who was on the staff of what Budenholzer, who was a pop disciple, and then we just got direct <clears throat> front office uh, relations right there with just poaching Sean from you guys. <laughs> For sure, I mean it's it's kind of Spurs East in a way. Uh, in in a way similar to how Atlanta was for a little while, um, but I mean the the trade for KG and uh, Paul Pierce, Sean Marks comes in, and three years later, um, you know they're they're one of the best teams. In the <clears throat> Tell me how this all happened. How did how did they get from definitively the worst trade in NBA history to where they are today? Um, we had the trade, made the playoffs that year. Uh, well, Brook well, Lopez ended up breaking his foot, which completely, back, back like, I think shattered more. expectations for that team. Back up even a little more. Tell me, tell me what you gave up in the trade. Tell me what the Nets gave up in the we trade. Gave up a, we completed the trade. That was in summer 2013. We officially had our own first round draft pick back this draft. Oh my God. <clears throat> And we didn't end up using it. We traded it. So we could get some space for this trade now. Right. <clears throat> so we gave up all those picks. The team was destroyed. The chemistry was terrible. Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett hated Darren Williams from the get-go, thinking that he was soft. Like I said, Brooke Lopez ended up breaking his foot for the second time, so he was out for the entire season, and that happened early on. They were terrible for the first half. They came through the second half of the year. 
played very hot, and then they uh, what happened? They that was the I called game shot with Paul Pierce that um, against right. Toronto, right. then and then LeBron just ousted us in the second round, and that was it. Um, then it was all downhill from there. Uh, Paul Pierce, KG, they left. Well, Paul Pierce left, KG stayed, and he was in like one of those fifteen minute roles. And eventually he left. Darren was out. Joe Johnson was the last one to leave from like that three. Traded Brooke Lopez in uh, the deal. And we'll get to that later on because now we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. But <clears throat> eventually all those guys left. We were a team of just bones and just coaches, which just bare minimum. And at the 2016 All-Star break, we were in the midst of going to a 2062 season, I think. So... At that All-Star break, um, Dmitry Razumov, who was then the chair of the Nets, or on the chair, uh, somewhere in the front office, was representing us at All-Star break. And he would end up talking to R.C. Buford about Sean Marks. <clears throat> mm-hmm. R.C. <clears throat> specifically states, I'm pretty sure this is a quote from, not a quote, but this is from like Zach Lowe's most recent article detailing this stuff. Mm-hmm. R.C., will not even give us the chance to interview Sean Marks unless he's just given full, like he's just able to do the job however he wants, no holds barred. Right. And so eventually they start talking to more people and one of those people we ask for um, like a reputation check is Bob Myers from Golden State. Mm -hmm. And he gives a glowing recommendation. And this completely changes course because at this time, it seemed the Nets were committed to hiring Brian Colangelo. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, eventually, they took a quick turn after that break, and uh, Marks was hired. Mm-hmm. So, and then, eventually, we, that led to Atkinson being hired, and that laid the foundation of our front office to on-court relationship. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, <clears throat> with no pick of our own in 2016, uh, but... At this time, Marks, one of his first big moves was he had his eyes set on Karis LeVert. Okay. So he trades Thad Young to Indy, and that gives us a first-round pick from them, which is number 22, and we draft Karis LeVert with that. Okay. So there's our star player, potential all-star. Would have been if he didn't dislocate his foot. Okay. <clears throat> uh, other moves that we did, we... Uh, uh, two G League send-offs who have ended up taking uh, All-Star Weekend festivity victories. Spencer Dinwiddie and Joe Harris. Mm-hmm. Dinwiddie won the skills competition two years ago, and Joe Harris is our most recent three-point champion. Uh, Dinwiddie was drafted by Detroit. He played 46 games over two seasons with them, and eventually was just bouncing around the G League, and he got cut, and he was pretty much out of the league until we scooped him up. And now he most recently this season signed a deal worth thirty million a year for him. I mean, yeah. we are sixth man. He he earned it. He's a great player. Um, Joe Harris was drafted by Cleveland, and he was sort of on those teams that were playing Golden State in the championship the first couple of years. And he ended up breaking his foot, and uh, while he was in the G League. He needed surgery, and a week later he was traded to Orlando, who immediately waived him, and essentially he was out of the league. <clears throat> we picked him up and developed him, and now he's he led the league in three-point percentage, 47.4%. Better than the Curry brothers. I, I just I, That still absolutely just blows my mind. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Another... Well, I'll just interject. He wouldn't have won the three-point contest if Davis Bertans were that was there. But I digress. That's just the the salty Spurs fan in me. But whatever. And then he also got the the Nets. Also got Damari Carroll. Um, how, how did how did they get him again? That was probably like our biggest like one of it, one of the more lopsided trades that we made. Uh, I don't. Do you know who Justin Hamilton is? Which, uh, no. You, you have no idea who he is. Okay, he was a like <clears throat> six seven, uber pasty dude, and he had a jump shot, but he was kind of like 
<clears throat> he was one of those going back and forth. And we traded him for Carol, Rodion's Kuruks, and Zanin Musa. Or I'm pretty sure we traded for the rights to those players, and they were still in Europe at the time. Right. And that was like a cap-clearing move, right? Pretty much. For and it netted us, Damari, and these two guys who are now who had minutes on our uh, NBA team last season. Roots is good. He's fast, but he's very reckless. He needs to be able to just... He needs to like slow down because once he commits to going full speed, he doesn't stop. If he sees the rim, he wants it. But it sometimes it leads to unnecessary like charges and stuff, offensive fouls. Just needs to clean that up. Young player, he has time to figure that out. Very excited. Um, another big trade was we traded Boyan Bogdanovich to the Wizards, who stayed there for half a year. We got a first round pick out of them, and that turned into Jared Allen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and a quick little side note. Aside from Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who was not extended an offer by the Nets, he is the last one from that 15-16 squad pre-Sean Marks era that, that lasts. If he's gone, that that's it. Everybody's. This is a completely different team now. This is all their team. Which... And, and talk to me about the, the D'Lo trade, too, because that, that was a significant move. Uh... D'Lo, he reputation shattered. He's not playing well in L.A. He's snitching out Nick Young for right. cheap on uh, Iggy, and we need to trade. We need to clear space, and this is we end up sending Brook Lopez over to them, right? And that brings us D'Angelo Russell and Tim uh, Timo Mozgov on his massive, terrible, terrible deal. Right. He spent a year with us, and we were able to we were able to trade him out after that. Now that netted a nice pickup, though, for the Lakers because we sent a draft pick over to them that turned into Kyle Kuzma. Okay. <clears throat> right, but all in all, like all of these moves was was this all the plan all along that you know in this massive free agency class we're gonna have? Well, it was like. We, we want to pick up uh, at the time, like it wasn't well known how, like the the things behind the scenes, like what they were doing with their development teams and stuff, and how they would be able to bring up players. We were just right, just because of how many people were in and out all the time. We didn't think that like we were ever going to actually have like a player to develop or how it was going to work out. But <clears throat> um, Russell ended up being a fantastic pickup for us, man. He was a big, big piece of the culture, big part of that dance bench team, man. He, he was a great yep. team player. Yeah, for for a guy who Magic shipped off uh, for a, a lack of leadership, uh, he he showed a lot this year. I just want to interrupt quickly. Some breaking news: Seth Curry and the Mavericks have reached an agreement on a four-year, thirty-two million dollar deal. He's going back to Dallas for. Not a lot of money. Um, how do you feel about that deal? I'm not sure. I didn't really know much about like what his situation was. I, I'm not sure like what like Portland was dealing with because I thought for sure like the way he sh- he was shooting and playing this year, he didn't, the way he fit on that team. Right. I thought that would be like a clear reason to come back, but I guess maybe it's a money situation. Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, I mean, that's not a bad situation in Dallas right now either. No, Dallas is going to be a solid team. Maxed out, Kristaps, like, Doncic. Um, it's going to it's going to be pretty interesting. They're not getting Dragic, which uh, I saw. But they're not getting him. They're not getting him. That was that was a a, a misfire. Okay, because that that was going to set up an interesting situation with them. Because apparently, uh, him and Luca were like Eurobasket teammates or something. Uh, uh, I think they they played for the national team. Yeah, and they were roommates, which was like the big like draw for that, which I thought was cool. Yeah, um, that that would have been a, a little scary for me, honestly. Spurs draft pick, Goran Dragic, um, and you know, I, I do kind of want to get to to the Spurs a little bit, um, and there is a tie-in with the Nets here. Damari Carroll, Spurs signed Damari Carroll to two years, thirteen million dollars total. I think it's an awesome signing for the Spurs. Great, it's a great value. Great value deal. Um, <clears throat> and everything I've read about him, who he is as a person, what he does on the basketball court, um, 
it seems to fit perfectly with the Spurs and especially with what they need, um, you know, on the wing this year with this roster. Um, t- tell me a little bit about Damari Spurs Carroll. What Spurs fans Spurs. Spurs. What was that? From Spurs East to the actual Spurs. Right. T- so tell me what we can expect from Damari Carroll. Um, just that gritty, always diving for loose balls, great defender type guy. He, he's, what, a 36% three-point shooter, mm-hmm. career three-point shooter. And we were able to, he's flexible because we were able to just throw him between both forward positions and he was able to hold, uh, hold water, no problem. Uh, he, he's, he just plays well on the team and he's just like a guy who knows how to space the floor, cuts well, is just good spot-up shooter. I mean, that's just like the reputation that's followed him around. He's not going to be one of those guys that's going to be consistently getting you 20 points a night, but he's just like a little things guy. He's a glue guy. Good right. luck presence. He's, he's somebody who, you know, he's not going to take any ISO possessions, I don't think. Uh, he, he is a, a perfect fit with this Spurs young core that, you know, really needs the ball in their hands. DeJounte Murray, Derek White, Lonnie and Walker. Veteran playoff, and some veteran presence who has good playoff experience. Exactly, and I was I was reading about him this morning. And you'll you'll you will get a solid sixty five seventy games out of him, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and I'm I'm guessing somewhere between twenty and twenty five minutes a game. Um, I think he would fit better as a starter, and it would be good to have Rudy Gay come off the bench, um, you know, and sort of be more ha- have more license to ISO and do his thing on the offensive end with the bench unit. Um, but you know, De- I'm not DeMar- sure exactly how that would fit because I'm not. He 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 didn't do a lot of starting for the Nets. Right. Uh, he he started two years ago a bunch in of games. Atlanta. He started in Atlanta on those uh <clears throat> on that uh Budenholzer team that went like what sixteen and twenty two. Right. That, right. That, ironically, the Nets took two games from in the first round. Right. Um. And Atkinson was an assistant on that team too. On that on that Hawks team, yeah, very cool. Um, well, one of the things I was reading was that uh, his breakout game was in San Antonio. Every single game the San Antonio Spurs play, there's some random guy that just steps up and puts in like 16 points. Everyone's like, "Who is this guy?" You know, and that was uh, Damari Carroll for one game, and Coach Bud was an assistant for the Spurs at, for that game. So. Um, you know, he kind of points to that as like a turning point in his career. Um, and then he points to Bud as teaching him how to cut and space the floor and do all of those little things to win. So, um, and then, you know, everything I've read about him as a person, uh, he, uh, he, he lost his brother when he was very young to a brain tumor. Um, and so, you know, he's paying tribute to that every time he checks into the game. Um, he got shot when he was in college. Um, Not here, that. Yeah, he, uh, he, he went to go, like, pick up some of his teammates from the club, and they were messed up and, like, getting in a fight. And he got, a, he got shot in the ankle, like, a fraction of an inch from his Achilles tendon. Um, and, you know, worked back through that. And, uh, you know, he, he's a, a person, a very mature person with a very well-rounded perspective on life. And uh, that has motivated him in his work. And I, you know, I just think you could, if you're the Spurs, all you have is the middle-level exception. Resigning Rudy Gay and signing Damari Carroll on this deal as pretty much perfect free agency for them, right? And so on brand, you know? Absolutely. Like, as soon as free agency starts, it's like they, they re-sign Rudy Gay. It's a pretty fair deal. You could argue that they're overpaying him a little bit, but it's, not a, two, a, deal pretty perfect. it's a two-year deal. It's <clears throat> not nearly as much as some other guys are getting. Like, you know, Terry Rozier, uh, Harrison Barnes getting four years, 88. Uh, Jamal Murray <laughs> getting five years, one seventy. I mean, like, oh my gosh! In that kind of market, TV money. In that kind of market, I'm f- 
fine with the Spurs paying a couple mil a year more than maybe people thought for to retain mm-hmm. Rudy Gay, who's a versatile wing player who they need. And then getting a guy who plays a similar role. I think it's really funny because Damari Carroll, I'm pretty sure, was drafted by Memphis to that Rudy Gay Memphis team and didn't get any playing time because Rudy Gay was there. Yep. Um, so it'll be, it's funny that those two are now teammates. Um, and I really do like the signing of Damari Carroll, um, as a culture guy. And, you know, I, I, you'd be hard pressed to find a better fit on the court and off for the Spurs. Um, culture word again, of course. Um, and so moving on now, I just want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, summer league coming up and, you know, some of these younger guys that have been Shout drafted. out to followers, homie. Shout out to the followers, baby. Spurs, Spurs Mafia sending me to Vegas. I love you guys. Um, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait till this afternoon. Uh, we, we finally get the first look at, uh, you know, Luka Shamanich, Keldon Johnson, uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, and how all of these guys fit together with like Lonnie Walker and you know the the other young players on the Spurs. Um, on on draft night, what was your reaction to what the Spurs did? Uh, I can't lie, I wasn't really paying attention too much to the draft after those first few picks. I knew that the Nets didn't have much invested interest in this. I didn't expect them to be selling as much as they did, right. even though they still got two picks at they got two players out of it. I had, I wasn't expecting much. I'm not really. I'm not. I don't really know much. I can't. Ad- no, that's that's all right. I like. I just feel like there's this perception around the league, and and the fans like, you know, the Spurs draft some Euro guy that like nobody had that high on their board and everyone just kind of like, you know, they're like, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Spurs, you know, yeah. that's kind of um, how I felt like about the two guys that the Nets picked. I mean, they have solid outlooks and I trust the development program a lot more than I did, but it's kind of just like meh. right now. Ooh, more news. Miami is finalizing a trade to send Hassan Whiteside to Portland for uh, Mo Harkless and Myers Leonard. Interesting. Smart for Miami, I think, because you mm-hmm. know Jimmy Butler would have been on oh. White Side's throat. <laughs> like that's the uh, that's the Jimmy Butler like Chris Paul Harden fries in the oil <laughs> meme right there. That's the same exact thing right there. Yeah, no, that that would not have gone well. I don't think not for Hassan White Side at least. Um, but that's that's an interesting move. Um, but yeah, what are what are you excited to see in summer league? Um, you know, as as a Nets fan, and uh, you know, and a, as somebody who likes and respects the Warriors, uh, Warriors are going to need to rely on some youth this year. Um, so so, what do you what do you think we'll see from from those teams in summer league? Uh... I, I'm not really sure for the Nets. The Warriors are going to be trying a lot harder to be scouting talent, I think, because they're they're scrounging a lot more for depth than the Nets are. Right. Um, especially for, I think, defensive help, because if they plan on keeping D'Angelo, which I, I'm thinking they will, because he's going to basically play the Clay Thompson slot for a year, give Steph a little more off-ball time, but that that backcourt is just going to hemorrhage points on defense. So right. they're, they're going to need some big time help there. The Nets, I think just need to scout a little more size. It's just the, they're, they're a small team. They play fast and they're sized that way, but they're, they're teams that just gave them absolute fits last year. Like, uh, like a Denver that has like those versatile bigs who can sh- sh- play on the perimeter and shoot and stuff. Like right. the, the, that's something they need to work on. When Duran comes back, that'll help. But we're still going to need probably at least half a season for him to get acclimated to <clears throat> real game action. So, right. And let's talk about the Warriors for a second because you know you you mentioned losing Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson 
got robbed of, you know, like like he he is an all defensive talent. He is arguably the best three and D player in the history of the league. Um, so he goes down with an in- injury. KD leaves. Andre Iguodala's out of there. Um, Iguodala's story, his what his out story is just insane, man. Him going on the Breakfast yeah. Club. Did you? I don't know if you saw that in an interview. I, I that saw, was uh, that was some funny stuff. I, I saw some of that. Do you think any of that played into the team being like, you know, okay, because like his book came out and he. I think him talked about his leg injury from the right. Houston series a few years ago about the mislabeling as a bone bruise. I think that that was a. That was a no. <clears throat> Which, I mean... And also, apparently, a week ago, the team was in contact with him and saying that he could be, like, casualty to a trade. So uh, right. it wasn't completely, like, surprise, you're out. Right. But, but what, what I, was, I, do, I do not think that in, that uh, that quote helped. What was your reaction to that? Because... To the I, interview or the... To the, the thing about his leg. Basically, um, he said, you know, they had the x-ray. It changed, it changed my perception of, like, not just the Warriors, but just, like, how these medical teams operate a little bit. I mean, I knew that, like, there, there would be some games and ships thrown in, but, I mean, it's just you're, you're completely just misdiagnosing a broken leg as a bone bruise. But also, it's the, the lack of information that seems to be, like, spread throughout the team, because he's saying that, like, players are going up to him and KD about their injuries being like, yo, how you doing? Like, do you think you're coming back soon? Like, do, do the people in the team, like, still not even know? Like, they really don't want it to leak that bad? I think that's an issue. That is an issue. Um, and I mean, especially when you pair that with, you know, Clay Thompson's injury, there's no way to prevent that, really. Just, that was that was, free that was I'm pretty sure it, it was his left ACL I think so yeah because yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the same leg that he strained but I'm pretty sure there's two absolutely just unrelated injuries yeah just I mean it was it was Danny Green defending a transition break like he does and you know <clears> got, <throat> got under him and some bad happened but KD that was obviously you know that's that's the one that I'm suspicious about the right. way he reacted the first time around all the I mean, yeah, it's Twitter speculation, and it adds to the hype. But you, you know that like he he was icing his Achilles and stuff. Like those bags were, um, down low at his ankle, near his re- Achilles region, not like upper, like the meaty part of your calf and stuff. Like, right. like he reacted the classic look back, like you got kicked reaction. Like that, that was that that was a that was something that kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, they they did diagnose that as a calf. I don't know. And then immediately you, you knew it happened the second time when he's down on the ground, he pinches like the back of his ankle. I'm like, that's not a calf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really don't like the way they handled that. I'm really sus- suspicious about the collaborative effort between team doctors and Kevin's doctors. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping something more will come out about that. I don't want to hear about the process. Right. It is uh, a sketchy situation. And I guess it's kind of a, a nice segue into talking about Kawhi. Um, you know, do, do you, from an outside perspective? I have absolutely no inclination of what's going to happen. There's so many rumors floating around. I mean, I thought, the, I thought the thing about him and KD teaming up was kind of ridiculous. I didn't think that there was enough like planning involved, especially with how much hype was going into the Kyrie situation. Right, so I, I think the two most likely scenarios are Clippers or staying in Toronto. Right. Um, apparently, the conversation was Kawhi calling KD and saying, "Do you want to play on the Clippers with me?" Okay. Um, and that was pretty much the extent of it, and like who was driving the conversation to where. Um, as far as where he goes. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he went to the Clippers or if he stayed in Toronto. It would surprise me a lot if he went to Los Angeles Lakers. Um, because me too. when it came out that he requested a trade, initially the interest was the Lakers. And then once LeBron signed, 
then it became, oh, he doesn't want to be overshadowed by one of his teammates, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he could potentially be overshadowed by two of his teammates. I think, honestly... And he's proven that he doesn't need multiple superstars on his team to win a championship. Right. And, you know, Toronto, very deep team. The the 2014 Spurs, very deep team. Um, You know, I think if he went to the Clippers and they used that other max slot, split it up, got Danny Green, got a couple other guys who can, you know, play well without the ball um, and defend, that's all Kawhi needs. Um, You know, people yesterday were like, oh, well, you know, if he's not teaming up with KD or Jimmy Butler in L.A. for the Clippers, he's not going. I don't know about that. Um, I don't think he particularly cares. I don't think I don't think the the lure of having other superstars on his team really affects him as well the way it does other people. Right. Right. I, I think plus, you know, I think he knows by now he's good enough to not do it. And another point I heard on the radio is he has two championships. He has two finals MVPs. It's time to go chase the bag. Right. Right. <clears throat> and you know, I think that was kind of the plan all along um, was getting him to somewhere where his management, his family thought he could make more money. Um, I think they're realizing now that Toronto and all of Canada is a big market. Um, One in Canada wearing New Balance instead of trying to sell yourself alongside Nike and LeBron. Right. I mean, you know, it's a big, big time uh, difference in, uh, Brand identity. I he could rule Canada if he wanted to. I just don't know if he wants to. I, I think, you know, if it, yeah, whether he wants to or not, it's not it's not a question of whether he could. I think he could by now just taking that first championship. For sure. And and no matter what he does, even if he leaves and on his way out, he's like, Toronto sucks. I hate it every minute. Uh, you know, peace. People will still be like, hey. Got us our first championship, man. Thank you. Like they'll still treat him like a god. It's not going to be like yeah, in same San situation Antonio. for like the for the Bay Area and Kevin Durant. He sacrifices Achilles for us. You're going to eat free forever. Right. Yeah. But like, <laughs> it's it's about and and also the the Raptors fans understand that he's a free agent now. Mm-hmm. Kawhi wasn't a free agent when he when he quit on the Spurs. You know, like. When, when those wheels got set in motion for him to leave San Antonio, it was halfway through a four-year max contract, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so, so Spurs fans are always going to feel some type of way. Um, totally understandable. And I think the thing with Kawhi, where he goes, I don't think any, any decision he makes – will really shed much light on his reasons for leaving San Antonio. Um, if, he, if he goes to L.A., if he goes to the Clippers after winning a title in Toronto, then it's pretty clear that he wanted to be there for, you know, most of the time. But if he stays in Toronto, you know, that's not all of a sudden proof like, you know, oh, the Spurs screwed this up. You know, this is the Spurs' fault that, you know, Kawhi was right. They misdiagnosed it. No. He's running it back with the team he just won an NBA championship with as the unquestioned alpha. And Um, did a good enough job of selling him on it. Right. And you just added another player to the list, like Paul George. They gave him him a ton of control. They, you know, they, they let him do enough load management for like a quarter of a season. And that's, an, that's another part of this, right? Mm-hmm. The long-term health of Kawhi Leonard. Because if the Spurs doctors were right, if the first couple of doc- doctors that he went to his second opinion for were right, this is a, a chronic issue with his quad, and it's degenerative. So he might never play more than 60, 65 games in a regular season. He, he'll if he if that happens he'll never win MVP probably and he can still go down as one of the greatest players in the history of the sport because they're managing him for the games that matter most um, you know it's 
And and then that plays into as well. Do you take uh, do do you even take the risk on a one and one deal with Toronto, or do you take the guaranteed money now and lock yourself into four years? I don't I don't see him locking himself into four years in Toronto. No, and I don't think that I think he and his camp are wary of the potential for future injury and they want to, you know, secure the bag and they want to be home in Los Angeles. Um, well, technically one thing I've heard, Los Angeles is not home. He's from San Diego. No, he's, he's from Riverside. Um, and he went to school, San Diego state. Um, but yeah, no, he's, He's not, he's not gonna you know have have an. It just like play. makes me think that this the the hometown thing is just blown a little bit out of proportion. I think it's less about the city of Los Angeles and more about you know being there with his family and you know where it's where you want to raise your kids, right? Like he he grew up in Southern California, loved it, um, by all accounts, and you know he's he's got a baby, and. He's, he's got to decide where he wants to put down roots. And I can be mad at him for the way he handled things in San Antonio, but I can't be mad at him for that. I can't be mad at him for listening to his family. Decisions. Right. Yeah. No, that, that's they, these people are human beings uh, before they're athletes. And, you know. And that is forgotten way too frequently nowadays. <laughs> right. Um, so... If you had to guess, gun to your head, where's he going? Uh, I'm going to have to say he's going to go to L.A. I know he's giving Toronto that last meeting, but I, I really don't think he's going to stay. I, I think he's he, he was committed to being to being out, whether he won or not. And even though he won, I, I think he's like, mission accomplished. Thank you, guys. Great, great basketball city. Thank you for embracing me, but uh, moving on. Right. And if and if he frames it as, you know, I want to be home with my family, I want to raise my child here, uh, you know, what can anybody say to that? Nothing. Think people in Toronto are going to be pissed? No. And I, I, I think, anything. but they, they've also been preparing it for the, for the whole year. The right. whole, it's inevitability. They've kind of known that it's been a possibility. Yeah, it, for, for sure. A hundred percent. Um, all right. Well, with that, I think we're, we're pretty much wrapping it up. Uh, tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Uh, at hands two, four, seven. I'm basically, that's my, uh, all my social media handles. If you choose to follow it's, uh, some sports, some fish when they're on tour, if you're into that type of thing, I don't know how many many of you basketball fans are out there, but they did drop a heater show last night. (laughs) How how many fish shows have you been to, man? I'm closing up on uh, 20. I'm, okay. I'm closing up on 20. It'll probably bro- uh, be broken this New Year's run if they come back to the garden. Or if Woj, uh, Woj stops firebombing it to the point where like it's going to be a pile of rubble. Right. The, he was the, letting the chopper sing yesterday, dude. I mean, like the, 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 the biggest <laughs> blow to me was the one when he said that like Kyrie and Kevin are going to take less on their guaranteed deals to accommodate DeAndre's annual $10 million. And but the, they can earn that back in bonuses. I mean, that's just that's just some genius, genius like lawyer shit right there. Right. No, a hundred percent. And yeah, the I mean, the Nets Nets have some geniuses running it. Uh, one one little tidbit I found out when I was looking up some uh, uh, research on these guys. Apparently, uh, Kenny Atkinson was um, a Knicks assistant back in from 2008 through 2012 and apparently uh made the push with mike d'antoni to start jeremy lynn and that led to insanity oh my god are you kidding me i'll send you a link after that's amazing a visionary a true visionary in charge all right well you enjoy Kyrie and kd and well, deandre I, jordan I and everybody else 2020 to enjoy kd with them but i will definitely enjoy Kyrie. Yeah, bas- bask in this, buddy. It's been uh... uh trust me, this is like I've never like felt better about the Nets. All right. Well, 
I, I've been a fan since we had Jason Kidd, so I mean that that says a lot about this team. Three yeah. years, man. Three years. Took three years to do the uh, to do what the Knicks have been trying to do for twenty five or whatever. <laughs> the Knicks, the Knicks have have been forty years. Oh my God. The Good thing we have ESPN, or I would have like called NYPD to do a welfare check on Stephen A. Oh my God, that poor man. That's why I laugh every time. And then they're all just lampooning it all day on ESPN, man. And he just oh goes, it. He great was, sport. He was so funny. Did you see him with Rachel Nichols? He was like, why are you doing this to me, Rachel? Mm-hmm. I hey, thought it was funny. Like, as he was on TV on that jump special doing that, the video of him also in his, just his first take t-shirt and backwards hat came right. out at like the same time. Right, right. That's Stephen A. Smith and Knicks fans are why I laugh when... Like Spurs fans start complaining about like Pop in the front office, like oh they overpaid Patty Mills or some like you know I'm like just just imagine being a Knicks fan, mm-hmm. like or just been, think just about being a Nets fan for the last ten years. We oh, endured dude, torture. We even endured a ten and seventy two season in that stretch, man. It's been rough. Jesus. <laughs> Whew. All right. Well, dark days are behind you, my friend. Uh, oh, hopefully. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, no problem. All right, Mafia. Peace out.